Victoria, we've got some new developments in the ongoing Victorian Liberal saga as the motion to remove Moira Deeming from the Liberal Party after she attended the women's rally in Melbourne took place yesterday. The vote uh, did not end up taking place in the way it was supposed to. She was supposed to be expelled from the party room, but it became clear that Liberal leader John Pesuto did not have the votes. So in an effort to save face, there was a compromise made and she has been... Um, removed for nine months, suspended for nine months. Still an appalling outcome, if you ask me, and not the end of the matter, for it appears that Pesuto is so desperate to attempt to um, explain why he has uh, compromised that he's been a little less than honest. Uh, let's have a listen here. The concessions that she's provided this morning, we sought that last weekend on the Sunday night. Having received uh, the material from Mora this morning, which contains that condemnation. I was satisfied that she understood why it was important to do that and also accepts why it's important for there to be a serious consequence. Understand, a nine-month suspension, losing the whip's position, these are serious consequences, given Mora had provided what I'd been seeking and recognised why it was important to do that. I was satisfied that it contained a condemnation that I'd been seeking all along. But the MPs say that the information Maura Deeming provided was not new. She hadn't just provided it that morning, as was claimed there. I've seen the document and she is not condemning the organisers. Indeed, on Twitter last night, Maura Deeming clarified that she did not condemn Kelly J. Key nor the local organiser, as a number of media outlets had claimed. Clearly, those media outlets had been briefed by the Pesuto camp. This is just a terrible mess, kosher, and really, it is the position of the Victorian Liberal leader now that's in question. It is mess, a mess indeed. And, you know, to me, it boils down to two things. One is just the flawed logic of guilt by association, which is where this whole story started. People do it all the time. The Liberal Party or the Republicans back in the U.S. like fall in this trap of, of doing that. And like, for example, just an analog in the U.S., David Duke, former member of the KKK, comes out every election, endorses a Republican candidate, and then everybody rushes to force the Republican candidate to get, condemn him. It's kind of the same thing over here. Yeah. And then if you don't condemn them sufficiently, you're Well, this was caught. even worse because it was almost like uh, guilt by association by association. So there was a couple of degrees of separation. It wasn't the people that... Maura Deeming was associating with, but it was the people they were associating with and what they had done in the past and who had that interviewed in the past. So it was the most absurd... Completely absurd. And with that, you know, that's why the votes weren't there, so I'll give the Liberal Party credit, uh, and he miscalculated there. But this is the hill he wants to die on. Mm -hmm. That is just... That's the second theme in this for me, sort of the feckless leadership that we see on the right. There are so many things that uh, can be utilised right now in terms of shoring up support from the base and reclaiming things where the Labour Party is maybe not serving the constituents, and this is the hill he wants to die on, so here we are. He could have really actually had a win here because here we had women's rights activists being viciously attacked by leftist activists who were, a couple of them arrested, they were behaving in a manner that was completely unacceptable, police presence was completely necessary to, to keep the violence from spilling out further. Then you have these 20 or so Nazi idiots show up, unconnected to either group, mm -hmm. and the Premier Dan Andrews immediately seeks to connect the women to the Nazis. And instead of John Pesuto coming out and saying, this is a cynical political exercise, this is not truthful or fair. These women were attacked from both sides. Instead of coming out with that, he buys into Dan's narrative and tries to out-Dan Dan. That's never a good tack. A good never idea. A good <laughs> it has ended in a hot, unholy mess. In fact, I don't think the end has happened. I think uh, his leadership is fatally wounded.